So it's kind of weird that nobody is talking about this comic. This is The Unexpected. It gets its name from the old DC horror anthology, Tales of the Unexpected, which was kind of like a Tales from the Crypt type of thing that DC did during the 60s and 70s. And it's, it's a super team-up book, and it's kind of like the New Age of Heroes version of The Defenders. You got... And I'm not sure how well this is going to come through on the screen, but because DC is doing like this shiny cover thing this whole month. But you've got this guy here, Neon, who's like a Doctor Strange type. And then you've got this blue dude whose name I don't remember. Uh, and he's like kind of like a Hulk type. And then you've got this Viking Judge woman. Uh, and then you've got uh, Firebrand here. And uh, so they're kind of like the original defenders of Namor, Hulk, Doctor Strange, and Silver Surfer. And they're doing this team-up thing where they're trying to like put together some of the problems that were caused by DC's metal and it's it's kind of weird when this comic first came out it was one of the the weaker titles of the new age of heroes it was just kind of confusing and the second issue wasn't a whole lot better but as time has gone on it's actually picked up quite a bit to the point that this is actually probably one of the better monthly series that's coming out of DC that I'm reading and you yeah, and nobody talks about it nobody uh, like, there's not a single person, pro or con, that I see online that ever mentions this. And it's kind of a shame because it's, it's I think, one of the better ones out of the New Age of Heroes now. Not quite up there with Silencer or the Terrifics, but it's up there. But it is a little bit weird. Like, the, the title of the book, The Unexpected, like, that's kind of weird. And then you have the characters here. And the weird thing is that this Viking Judge woman and this dude here, they both died in issue one. And they've remained dead. So it wasn't like a fake out, like they they seem to actually be dead, but they've been on the cover of every single comic since then. And it's just this neon guy and this firebrand woman who are going around trying to uh, follow this, this trail of uh, nth metal that is apparently going to have some kind of effect on the multiverse as a whole. And of course, when you deal with nth metal, you're dealing with Hawkman. So the fact that you've got a, a you know, a fairly well-known DC character, and it's barely even advertised that he's in there, and it seems like they're trying to push Hawkman a little bit more, because he was in Metal, he has his own series now that's really good, and then he's in this, and actually the main pro antagonist of this series, Anamar Sin, is a Hawkman villain who eats Nth Metal, and it, so it, it's got a lot of things going for it, and it's just weird to me that nobody talks about it at all. So one of the problems with this series, and I'll admit this, is that you really kind of have to know your DC history to know what this is, like both recent history and and past history. Because, for example, uh, even though this dude, Anamar Sin, is the main antagonist, there's a secondary antagonist that we've only seen glimpses of. Yeah, here he is, this dude right here, this Mandrak character, Mandrak the Cosmic Vampire. And this character is really obscure uh he was the main antagonist in the final crisis series from 2007 and 8 and but even though he was the main antagonist he didn't actually show up in that series until like the second to last issue or something like you had to be reading the tie-ins to really know who this guy is this guy is he's one of the monitors gone bad essentially the monitors are they watch over the multiverse they're, they're sort of omni above time and space and they watch over the overall stability of the multiverse and it's heavily heavily hinted that Mandrak is actually the original monitor from Crisis on Infinite Earths and from the time leading up to Crisis so that basically the guy that helped to save the, uh, the universe the first time around somehow got sent into the bleed and got twisted into this vampire that yeah he eats people but more importantly he eats stories he eats concepts and so the, the superheroes are basically the only kind of cure that they can uh, they can beat this guy, specifically Superman. And he even mentions it, that Superman sent him into the Overvoid, which in Grant Morrison's DC Universe cosmology is like the stuff outside the universe. So it's all kind of confusing if you don't, if you haven't read Final Crisis and you don't know what that is. <laughs> and this guy just kind of shows up. And they're actually greatly underplaying just how big of a threat this dude is. And the guy that they have being the actual antagonist, Anamar Sin, is no slouch either. And it's not 100% clear how this all works because this is all heavily tied into the stuff that Metal did, introducing this idea of the dark multiverse, introducing this, the reintroducing hypertime and the bleed and things like that. So that's all canon now. And so that, it's like that the series kind of suffers 
from that if you're not into that, but quite frankly, I kind of am into these deep dive uses of like obscure continuity things. Uh, I mean, here they are, Castle Frankenstein, presumably the Frankenstein from Seven Soldiers, the, the agent of shade uh, that apparently Hawkman knew in a prior life. And so we see Hawkman freak out when he comes into contact with this Ant Metal Shard. So even if you're not really big into the lore of it and you're not big into the deep dive story, you still get shots like this, which is referencing metal. And then he ends up getting into a fight with Firebrand. And her thing is that she's powered by this Ant Metal engine called the Conflict Engine. And you can even see that she has little like exhaust stacks on her back. So it's a literal engine. And it means that uh, she went from being a nurse to having this experiment performed on her where she has to get into a fight at least once every 24 hours or else she will basically overheat and die. And it seems like that every single time she gets into a fight, at least since the series started, uh, it's getting more and more out of control that it goes from being a... Uh, that basically she gets more and more emotional every time. And then Neon is some kind of protector of the time stream or something that was basically designated by uh, the forces of B. I mean, they haven't really got into that too much. Uh, but he, he basically is Doctor Strange. He was a very arrogant doctor that uh, something bad happened to him and he basically got he basically died and got reformed by the time stream. Um, I'm kind of oversimplifying it because quite frankly it's been a while but if you just think of this as being DC's Defenders, it makes a lot more sense. So we get um, more shots here, and then you get stuff like this, where he reactivates uh, some kind of watchet, whatever, that draws this guy's attention. And so this is, like I said, Anamar Sin, an old Hawkman villain, and who, um, yeah, comes off as really genuinely menacing. Uh, this is a guy who can... All these people, in some way, shape, or form, use Ent Metal, and this guy eats Ent Metal, and he's pretty much has them by, <laughs> by the short hairs, as they say. Um, so it's a uh, this guy, you know, and he's he's some kind of like Hawkman devil, like on Thanagar. This guy is basically Satan. So he's <laughs> so you have a bunch of like weirdos, you know, this Doctor Strange ripoff. Um, this woman here, she's got kind of an original thing, but. She's, she's still kind of obviously based on Namor. And, uh, but they still are dealing with this guy who so far has had the leg up on them pretty much every step of the way. And it's pretty much only dumb luck that they've gotten this far. And like I said, two of them have already died. So there definitely feels like that there's a lot of stakes here. So you get these consistently good action month to month. And you get an interesting story, even if a lot of times it's not 100% clear what's going on. But it's it's clear that it's leading up to something. But the problem is, is that this is one of the worser selling New Age of Heroes books. I mean, it's only at issue five, and I, I think it's at like eleven thousand units. None of them are doing terribly well, but this one tanked faster than I think almost any other one. And like I said, the first couple issues really weren't that great, but since then, I think it's gotten a lot better. And it's I think that it's one that maybe deserves a second look if you haven't already looked at it. Um. So yeah, and gosh, I, I always hate that the books that I like, it's it's harder to talk at length about them more than uh, <laughs> more than the ones that I hate. But yeah, I don't know. Between the consistently, um, you know, very good art, uh, this art is done by Ronan Cliquet, who I I don't know who that is, and then the writer is Steve Orlando, um, who who writes Supergirl and a couple other things, but. Uh, yeah, <laughs> um, it's a shame that the New Age of Heroes in general didn't do too well, and it's a shame like books like this that were trying to be a little bit different um, didn't catch on. But if you, I don't know, have three dollars to spare, you know, you could do worse than this. Um, so yeah, just gonna wrap that up right there. Tell me what you think. Tell me if you're reading this or any of the New Age of Heroes books. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Um, in any case, this is Unring Chevron signing off.